We've all heard about toys that have been deemed unsafe for children, but now a new report shows chemicals found in dozens of children's bath products you use every day may be harmful despite label claims like gentle and pure dozens of top selling products could be contaminated with the cancer causing chemicals which aren't listed on the product label joining me now to talk much more about this is Kathy Curtis from Clean New York and Kathy first of all thank you so much for coming in thanks for having me obviously when we take a look at this report kind of some startling results here tell us what you found coming out of your no more toxic tub report no one was more shocked than I, as a mom of four children who's used these products, you know, pr pretty much from day one with my children. And I was surprised to see that 61% of the products tested had both of the cancer-causing chemicals, formaldehyde and 1,4-dioxane. So a high, percent, a high percentage of products contained both of the cancer-causing chemicals, not just one. And an uh, even higher percentage, of course, contained one or the other or 80 percent. Now explain, because you and I were talking obviously to prepare for this, and it's not that these products contain those two chemicals, they're found though in some of the ingredients in the... Right, and therefore they're contaminants yes. of in certain ingredients, that, and that's how we were determined which products to test based on ingredients like sodium lauryl sulfate, and various ureas. And we're obviously we looking at some of the products. I mean, obviously names we all recognize, Johnson & Johnson and the list that you brought with you, um, L'Oreal, Huggies, I mean, these are all products Avino, that... Avino. That's um, right. Men and Baby Magic, you know, very common products that uh, we've all used and we trust. We've trusted. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was handed these products when I came home from the hospital with my son oh, sure. as samples and also coupons to buy more. So you get put down a product use pathway that you just continue. So what right. happens um, now? I mean, for instance, have you heard anything from Johnson & Johnson since this report has come out or any of the other companies? No, not as of today, but what we're really urging is legislation both at a state level and nationally, because the problem is that these uh, products are largely unregulated. For example, the European Union, which has much more stringent regulations on cosmetics and personal care products, uh, protects their citizens. And we, these companies often make two product lines, one for the European Union and one for the rest of the world. And many companies don't put these ingredients that have these contaminants in their products, so we know it can be done. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're actually getting a little short on time, but Kathy, you know, parents obviously watching this and seeing these products, and a lot of people have these in their their homes. What are you suggesting to parents? I suggest to parents that they go to www.cosmeticsdatabase.org, which has a really comprehensive list of personal care products in general and, a, and an entire section that's just childcare products. But we can't shop our way out of this. We really do need policies that protect all children. We can't become experts on, you know, exosylates and 1,4-dioxane. And, you know, parents sure. should be able to walk into a store and take th something off a shelf and just know that it's safe. And unfortunately, that's not the case right now. All right, Kathy, thanks. And also, we want to mention that if you do want to uh, read the full report, we're going to post that on our website. Great. So that'll be helpful as well. But, Kathy, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for having me.